Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick info before we begin. Today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Now let's get started with the first one. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user not so macho feline. My wife, 30 female, has given up alcohol for good and I, 31 male, am finding it difficult to deal with. My wife and I have been together for about a decade and we've been married for three years. I'd say we're very happy, enjoy spending time with each other and have a similar view of the world. We don't have kids, for now, just pets. Things have been pretty great, on the whole. Now, over the last few years, my wife has been working in a hard but very rewarding job and during that time, her alcohol consumption increased quite a bit. She'd usually have a couple of glasses of wine in the evenings at home to wind down. Every once in a while, she'd be involved in work events in the evenings, which could get quite boozy too. Her field can be quite boozy in general, they usually have a glass or two in the office on a Friday afternoon. She never got drunk, but clearly she had become quite dependent on alcohol as a way to let off steam from her career. It wasn't unusual for her to have half a bottle of wine a night, although she'd rarely have more than that. She's quite petite though, so I guess that isn't an insignificant amount. Just to be clear, I never in a million years would have classified her as even remotely an alcoholic. About two months ago, she told me that she was going to be cutting down on her drinking and was reading some kind of self-help book about doing so. I'm not sure what triggered her desire for this, but I suspect it has something to do with this particular co-worker of hers that is about 20 years older and, to put it simply, is a bitch and is also almost certainly a high-functioning alcoholic herself. I reckon my wife didn't want to end up like her. Hashtag life goals. When she started following this book, I didn't think that much of it. She's cut down her drinking for a while in the past. However, a couple of days ago, she told me that she was actually quitting alcohol entirely and wasn't going to drink ever again. I feel awful for saying this, but this really hit me quite hard. I know that it shouldn't, people go through much worse with serials, alcoholics and all, but I've found myself suffering from a real sense of loss, and then guilt, thinking I'm being selfish for not being supportive enough. She did say I didn't seem as enthusiastic as she thought I'd be after she told me. I mentioned that it was a shock and of course I'd support her, but for some reason this is really getting to me though. Now I know what you're probably thinking, I'm an alcoholic myself or at least highly dependent on it. But the truth is, that just isn't the case, I hardly drink. I haven't been properly drunk since I was at college and even then I hardly drank compared to everyone else. I hardly ever drink at home, maybe a beer or a glass of wine every couple of weeks. I often don't drink for months at a time if I have no social reason to do so. Basically, I'm an occasional social drinker and no more. Even in those social situations, if I don't feel like it or one of us has to drive or there's nothing available that I like the taste of, then I just won't drink. This is why this is so bizarre. I'm such an infrequent drinker, surely it shouldn't bother me that my wife stopped drinking. Unfortunately, that would be too simple. Instead, I have this chasm of loss forming in my chest. I've told her that people won't really act differently around her when she starts saying she's quit. In my experience, others don't really care unless you're not drinking impedes their desire to drink. It asks, don't be a douche about it and people don't really give a crap. Unfortunately, those rules do not apply to me. I think it may be because those other people are only here for short snapshots of time whereas my wife and I have committed to spend the rest of our lives together. I keep thinking about what we'll be missing in the future. We won't be able to share a bottle of wine together over a nice dinner at home, in a restaurant or on a holiday. We won't be able to go on a date to a bar and gradually get tipsy while listening to some nice live music. We won't be able to crack open a bottle of champagne to celebrate a major life milestone in one of our lives. Years down the line, when we might have teenage children, we won't be able to give them half a glass of wine at the dining table with Sunday lunch as my parents did for me. Of course, none of this is reasonable. Oh, you caught that too? 
No one needs alcohol to have a functional and rewarding social life, and there are far too many people suffering because their spouse won't give up alcohol when they actually seriously need to. So, of course, I'm in the wrong. It's just, it's breaking my heart right now, as selfish as that may be. I really needed to vent. I tried to find some advice online, and of course, this doesn't seem to have happened to anyone else. Any Google searches just give me hits with advice for how to get your alcoholic spouse to quit. Far more important, sure, but of no help to me. I can't talk to my friends about it because I'm not going to betray the trust of my wife. No one else knows that she's quitting for good yet. I'd usually talk to my wife about any problems I or we have, but I don't want to damage her process right now as she gets used to a new life without alcohol. Hence, here I vent, mope, despair with a throwaway account, ready for the anonymous internet to judge me if anyone makes it through my wall of text. Maybe some of you can give me your perspective on this? Has anyone gone through anything like this? Well, Opie, my judgment and perspective lead me to think that you're bored and you're looking for something to whine about. All of the things that you mention are part of this chasm of emptiness that's forming in your chest are stupid. I'm sorry if it sounds insulting, but I'm not really sorry. For example, you're grieving because you won't be able to give your non-existent children a glass of wine during Sunday lunch because your wife doesn't drink anymore? How's that work? Also, how important is it for your love that you need to go to a bar and get tipsy while listening to music? I mean, dude, the things you are grieving about are so precise and honestly, they don't even need alcohol. Why not just bond with your wife over liking music without getting tipsy? How about replacing that nice bottle of wine that you'd like to share over dinner with a conversation? I know you think you know this OP, but maybe you don't because of this post. But bonding over alcohol is not a positive thing in any relationship. And of course, that applies to anything stronger than alcohol. So yeah, OP, if I was in your shoes, I'd try to just get through this myself because it is a non-issue. Just be happy for your wife and support her that she's made this healthy decision for herself. And what do you guys think about OP's situation? What would you do if you were... No, you can't be in his shoes because it's ridiculous. What kind of advice would you give OP? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Gravity Line says, About three years ago, my husband, then boyfriend, started eating vegan and I went through a period of this quiet. We live in an urban area and frequently eat out. Suddenly, I needed to worry about whether or not my husband had more options than an iceberg salad at any place I wanted to go. Many things changed in our eating discipline and I didn't feel like I could say anything about this. He clearly had the moral high ground as the person making the more ethical and sustainable choice. Which in itself made me feel somewhat insecure. So I understand how you're feeling and my comment is that you need to give yourself time to get used to it. Acknowledge how you feel without letting it impede your support of your wife. I love my husband more than I need to socially share my food with him, as I'm sure you love your wife more than you consider drinking a part of her. And ultimately, I'm proud of him for staying true to his health and values. You married a self-aware person, and that is a gift. Bokroik Biv 3 says, I don't have much advice other than saying I kind of get where you're coming from. I'm imagining you're gonna get an onslaught of you're being a spoiled brat, stop being a twat and support your wife, etc. But as someone who is not an alcoholic but enjoys the hobby and treat of trying a new craft beer, champagne on a holiday, I can understand your sense of loss. My guess is time will heal your hurt. Continue to support your wife and good luck. Sparkling cider is a nice swap for the holidays too. Smiley face. Anthony Bourdain says, Change of any sort can sometimes cause anxiety. Your brain knows logically that this is for the best. So you just have to have the self-awareness to support your wife as much as you can. And your gut catches up to your brain. Additional information from OP's comments. I agree that our friends won't care. If there's more than just the two of us, it won't matter in the slightest that she doesn't drink. The rest of us still can. Yes. It will, of course, change things when it's just the two of us, which is why I was worried. But I'm already getting used to it. Venting on here was hugely cathartic and helped get a lot of my worries out. I will tell her my concerns once I feel she's dealt with the change enough on her own. 
I'll be honest, my negative views on not drinking are going to be forged a little by the non-drinkers I know. I don't know any ex-alcoholics, but one of my uncles and his wife stopped drinking when I was a teenager and they became quite boring people. It wasn't the drink that made that happen, I know that intellectually. It was my mother's, her sister's, death that closed them off and they stopped socializing as a result of that. However, as a teenager, I just saw the change from them drinking a shot of liquor after a meal with everyone else, not every night, I mean family get-togethers, which was simply a fun thing not ever to do. It just they stopped having friends over and the time after a meal was a somber affair. Not the booze's fault, but it was kind of a fun family thing after a meal that I was too young to partake in, but always observed. The other non-drinker I know is one of those incredibly annoying Facebook addicts who will not stop going on about how they don't drink. I know my wife won't become like any of these people, but it does taint my view of it. I'm going to get used to it. I'll be fine, but it did make me grieve. It's kind of like there was a hobby that she was more into, but we enjoyed sharing and then suddenly she proclaimed that she would never do that hobby again. It's like removing one of the things we had in common and I don't want to be one of those couples that grows apart over time through divergent interests, so it did bother me. I'll adjust though. Well, OP, I gotta say that if you grow apart from your spouse because they stopped drinking, then you've got a problem. Anyways, it seems like the community gave OP some sensible advice because he's over here saying that he'll get over it and he'll be okay. So how about we move on to the update to see how the story ends. But of course before that, here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after the video. Now let's move on with the update. Today, I happened to stumble across this throwaway. I posted a year ago about how my wife had given up alcohol for good and how I was finding it hard to deal with. I'd first like to thank everyone that commented on the original thread. I did read everything, even if I didn't reply to everyone. There were people who thought, as I expected, that I was selfish, that it shouldn't matter that my wife was making that decision and that I likely had my own hidden drinking problems. There were others though that understood and could see my point of view. It's been a year since my post and I can definitely tell the people that said it was her decision and had nothing to do with me and if I felt like it affected me then I had my own problems that they are wrong. In a marriage, at least in the kind of marriage I believe in, your and your partner's actions and choices are intertwined. The whole point of a marriage is to share the rest of your lives together. I had expected and hoped for a long future together, sharing experiences that typically included alcohol. Our society as a whole is intertwined with booze. We first met when we were both tipsy at a student bar. Pretty much all the social occasions we've ever been to have involved some alcohol. That's just where our society is. Drinking was, in some ways, a shared interest. Oh, that's so sad for you. If you met a partner through rock climbing and you climbed together several times a week, got married and carried on climbing together all the time, then suddenly your married partner said, sorry, I'm never going to climb again, you would feel hurt. Like something core to your relationship had been taken away. I'm sorry, but that's just a stupid parallel. So what have I learned in the past year? Well, for one, your partner giving up booze really doesn't matter. You just adjust. Genius. I'd be lying if there were times that I miss us sharing a bottle of wine together, but those thoughts are few and far between. It's far more important to me that she's happy and feels much better about herself. She's healthier, has a better outlook on life, and when we are out together, we actually spend more quality time together. I think I said that. I've never been a big drinker, so if we were out, she'd get tipsier way before me, so in a way, we weren't on the same conversation level by the end of the night. Now, we can talk properly throughout. There are lots of benefits too. We spend much less on drinks now, of course, especially at home. We do, however, spend more on food. That's something I get more enjoyment from anyway though. It's all about you, isn't it, OP? We've been on holiday, we've been to weddings, we've been out to loads of dinners, we've had Christmas together. It's all been fine. I always knew it would be. Other people don't really judge much once you say you don't drink, as long as you don't make a big deal about it. My wife still doesn't tell people that she's an alcoholic. Was she ever? 
The story is still, I gave up for a month and found myself really liking it and felt better about myself, so I gave it up for good. It's just easier, makes less of an issue of it, and draws much less attention. We're probably happier than we were before, although we were plenty happy then too. I love my wife and I love spending time with her. For what it's worth, I do still drink. I didn't drink much before she gave up and now I do drink less. I'd share a bottle on nights out before but hardly ever drank at home. I'd say I had on average 2-3 to three units a week. Now I'm more at 0.5-1 to 1 units. It is once every 2 or 3 weeks I might have a couple of beers. I hardly ever drink when we're out together. Only if I really fancy it. When I just quite fancy it, I'd usually choose not to out of solidarity with my wife. One change I have noticed is that I judge the crap out of restaurants that have a crappy soft drink selection or lack of non-alcoholic cocktails. High-end restaurants tend to have several great options and will go out of their way to cater to you. Other restaurants do seem to judge you for not getting a bottle of wine, likely because they make a healthy profit off of alcohol. Annoyingly, we're not doing it because we want to be cheap. We'd happily pay for an overpriced mocktail that's basically just tonic water with a cucumber in it. I do enjoy being prepared for my wife now though. It is, if we're at a function where they're handling out champagne and nothing else, I will do what I can to get her something else. I'll happily be a bit of an a-hole if a place hasn't thought about providing non-alcoholic drinks. There are plenty of people that can't drink for a number of reasons after all. Religion, health, pregnancy, etc. Places really should be prepared. I've rambled on for a while here. It is a bit disjointed as I wasn't planning on spending loads of my day writing about this. This took you all day? So I'd like to end this post by thanking so many of you that in the original post, through their comments, helped me realize that it could have been a lot worse. She could have opted to go vegan instead, which would have been bloody awful. I see what you did there. Also, for giving me substitute suggestions. Also, for saying that our life probably lacked any real problems if this was such a huge deal to me. That really made me laugh and see the truth in it. Thank you all again. Smiley face. Alright OP, well I guess I'm gonna call it a happy update because you're happy. Or at least that chasm in your chest, you know, from grieving the alcohol that you missed wasn't that big. So here's wishing you and your wife the best in the future. Take care OP and thank you for sharing. Now let's move on to the next post that like I said in the beginning also has an update. This post is from the subreddit relationships and it's by user deleted. Boyfriend caught on dating app. My boyfriend 30 is apparently not happy with our current relationship. I'm 26 years old and we moved in together two months now. At first things went great and for the past 30 days he's been distant. A friend texted me yesterday and said she had some bad news. Apparently he's actively on a dating app. I decided to make a fake profile and we matched and we have been communicating since last night. He says he's single and looking for his other half and how he's ready to settle down and start a family. I wanted to confront him and leave but I gave up my place and quit my job to live with him. I have yet to find a job so getting my own place is hard at this moment. My family is in Europe so currently I'm alone and have nowhere to go. Should I confront him or should I wait until I'm able to move out? Well Opie of course first thing is that he absolutely sucks and yeah you need to end this relationship. However I think you need to play it safe so here's what I would do. I would double up on the job hunting to get a job as soon as possible and I will also start looking for a place to go. So as soon as I get a job and I can play for a new place I'm out of there. I'd also be collecting all of the evidence that points to him wanting to cheat or being a cheater. Not to show to him when you call him out on being a cheater but just in case he decides to put some sort of of different narrative out there, you can shut it down quickly. And what do you guys think about this whole thing? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out those community comments to see what they said. Mad Panda Swag says, wait till you're able to move out, but until then, catfish the hell out of him. When you finally have all your ducks in a row, ask him out to dinner as catfish and show up and tell him that you know what he was doing and you're leaving him. Muckin Mad says, Oh gosh, get your plan in place and execute. Pack your stuff and leave the relationship. As soon as you're out, message him from her, telling him who you really are. Ghost him, block him from everything. He doesn't deserve anything more. 
And Scony Sotan says, one, get a job, two, find a new place to live, three, buy a pair of running shoes and run far, far away from that dumpster fire. All right, well, pretty clear and concise. Community says, get things set up and then bail. So let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. So I, female26, posted a few weeks ago about my now ex, male30, online chatting with other women. I can't seem to find the actual post. Long story short, my friend sent me screenshots of my ex asking women for their numbers. He ended up confessing and started being all clingy. He was never like that before. Anyways, I'm moving a few states away because I found a new job and an apartment. He thinks there's hope for us, but there's no way in hell I want him back. I'm happier with the new journey I'm about to embark on. Thanks for all of your advice. Well done, OP. You got what you needed and now you are out. Congratulations and good riddance to that dumpster fire. Take care, OP, and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.